Hi, I'm Kathy Neptune and welcome to my kitchen. I'm going to share with you tips, tools, and recipes to make your life in the kitchen fun, fast, and fabulous. And I was thinking over our menu for tonight. I love summer, I love grilling, and we have s such a bounty of seafood in New England, and I love it. And you know what we haven't done yet is swordfish. And I had a couple of requests for, um, and I love all your suggestions, everybody who writes in, thank you so much. I read them all, and I, I really take in what you're looking for. And a couple of people said, what kind of seafood would you like to do on the grill? And it's not that easy, because you know how soft and delicate, like a uh, halibut or, or haddock or one of those. And of course, you could do shrimp and scallops, but I thought swordfish might be just the thing for the summer. And we're going to bump it up a little bit by using a light, summery marinade. And I think you're going to like it. So I start out with good old plastic bag. And I have some, um, what I'm going to do is add some seasonings to this. And I'm going to start out with the juice of one fresh lime. We're going to put that in there. I love fresh limes. And then we're going to do a few, and I'm not going to really measure, but probably a tablespoon of green onions to give it a little bit of flavor. Because swordfish is kind of a delicate fish. A little bit, probably, I don't know, a a tablespoon and a half or two tablespoons of olive oil. Good quality olive oil, that's important. And then we're going to do some seasonings. A little bit of salt. And we're going to do enough for two people. You can certainly do more, but I think that's good. And we're going to get a clove of garlic in here. A nice big fresh garlic clove. And I wouldn't do this ahead because we're only going to marinate this for half an hour. Because if you do it more with the acidic in there with the um, lime juice, it would actually cook the fish and make it rubbery. So you don't want to have that happen. So it just give us enough time to do some other dishes. And then I have here... I thought this would be kind of fun. My spice is a seafood spectacular, and it has, um, let me see the ingredients, and you probably have a lot of these on hand. It's uh, paprika, uh, onion powder, garlic powder, a little oregano, um, and these are all things you might have on hand, but I like it already blended, so whenever you can add a little bit more flavor, go for it. So I'll put probably a teaspoon in there. And then we're going to mix that all up. And then I have this beautiful swordfish. Oh, you know what I was going to add, too? I have some um, paprika. I thought that might give it a little color. Not um, smoked paprika, just regular paprika. But you could do this like a Mexican style. You could put um, different kind of herbs in there. And then I have a good chunk of swordfish. And I want you to notice the thickness of this swordfish. It's not too thick. You don't want it too thin. And we're going to use some metal skewers so we don't have to soak wooden skewers. And I'm doing this because we're going to do this under a broiler, not on the grill. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's important. I think if we did it under the broiler, the wooden skewers might catch on fire, even if you soaked them. So I don't need the drama. And we're going to do it in a safe way and use metal skewers with some different vegetables. So I'm going to add that in there. And then I have some cherry tomatoes. And I'm going to kind of eyeball how many we're going to put in there because we won't use the whole thing. We may even have enough for three skewers. So if you have extras, that's okay. I'd grill them anyway or broil them and have extras. Let's do... That looks good. And then... This will be fun. I have some beautiful lemon slices. So let's do 
four of those. And they're sliced probably a good quarter inch because we're going to fold these over and put them on the skewers like so. And then chunks of onion. So you can see it's not too thick and not too thin. Just about right. I'm going to cut through. And I'm going to try and get chunks that will go on the skewers. I'm going to cut them into quarters, I think, and see how that works. And we may not use them all, but we'll have them if we need them. And like I said, get an extra skewer and just do vegetables, because that's always good to have. Now that bag, it filled up pretty quickly. So this is a great um, economical meal if you're entertaining, because you have a little bit of everything in here. And it smells really good with all the herbs. And then I have fresh herbs here we can use for garnishing, but we're going to use in our little salad. So take all the air out, give it a good toss. Look at the colors. This is going to be nice. Now you could also, if you like, add zucchini or red peppers or green peppers, but I kind of like this combination. It's a little bit milder. And... I'm actually going to put on the timer so it doesn't over marinate. Just be very careful that you don't overdo it. So these are going back in the refrigerator. And we're going to let that set. And I'm going to set the timer to 30 minutes. Okay, timer. Okay, maybe I won't clear off. There we go. I didn't clear it off. Okay. Technology is not my thing. So we're doing that, and I'm going to move this over for now. And we're going to do a beverage that I think you're really going to enjoy. And it's a strawberry lemonade. Have you ever had a strawberry lemonade? It's really, really good. And I'm going to do it because we're going to, take some fresh strawberries and we're going to put them in a blender as well as a lot of lemon juice and I'm going to clear the decks from the fish. Use that in a minute. And I have a blender here and I like the big ones. You can use a mini blender but I think these work really well. And I'm going to take about a cup of fresh strawberries. And they're beautiful this time of year. Now, this should reduce down when I put them in the blender. And I'm going to measure out about a cup. But I love this recipe because you can really adapt it to your taste. If you want a little more lemon or a little more strawberry, you can do either or. And then I'm going to take a half a cup plus one tablespoon of sugar. Now you can make this sugar free if you want. So one half cup plus one tablespoon. So if you wanted to double the recipe, of course you use one cup plus two tablespoons of sugar. And I'm gonna get it started. About a half a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And you can add more if we need it. So air a little to the lighter side on the lemon juice. And then I've measured out two cups of water, but to get it started, I'm just going to add a little bit. And I used, um, the lemon juice was equal to about four to five medium-sized lemons, but these lemons were huge. So I used two jumbo lemons and then two smaller ones. And I used a reamer. I juiced it with a little uh, hand juicer. And I kept the lemons, the half lemon slices, uh, and it made like little cups and cleaned them out really well and put them in the freezer. And they make such a beautiful presentation when you fill them with a, a sherbet in the summertime. You use the half lemons like little frozen cups and you serve your sherbet in that. So I, I hope to do that for you someday. It's a beautiful, beautiful presentation. And you're not throwing out a ton of le lemon slices that are perfectly fine. And you can do the same with lime slices as well. So I'm going to zap this just till it's pureed. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
Now, the more you puree it, the easier it's going to be because to strain it because we're going to put it through this strainer. Okay, so let me give it another zap. It's settling down just a little bit. And you want to blend all that sugar and get it really, really fine with the water. I think that's going to be just right. And then get yourself a large bowl. And you can even set this in the refrigerator overnight if you'd like. But see how finely mesh this screen is. That's what you want. And if you get a few little bits and pieces in there, it's no big deal. But you want to save like a lot of the seeds and the chunks of the strawberries out of that. This is a great summer dish. It really, really is spectacular. And then we're going to pour in the rest of the water. And this is why I saved some of it out, so that we can just pour this and get a little spatula. And if you can see here, I'm just kind of pushing this through a little bit, just to clear out what we have. And you may have a few seeds. You can use even a smaller mesh if you'd like. But you can see there's plenty of seeds in there that didn't make it into the mix. So that's pretty good. And we're going to let that set. Put that in the refrigerator. And this you could do ahead of time. And also, these make great uh, fruit pops for the kids. You can pour these right into ice cube trays or those little things and put popsicle sticks in them. It's perfect. It's lemon juice, sugar. You can make this sugar free by using a sugar substitute. But to me, it tastes like summer. And wait until you see the way we serve this up. This is really, really a great summer dish. It just says summer. And strawberry season is right around the corner. So great way to use your strawberries in a really good way. So when we come back, I'm going to do a couscous and vegetable salad. This You're not going to want to miss it. It's really good. Great to go along with our seafood kebabs. So we'll be right back. Hi. Welcome back. Our Swordfish is almost ready to be put on the skewers, and we're going to broil that. And to go along with this, we're going to make a couscous salad. And it's not just a regular couscous. I want you to see this. This is what they call a pearl couscous, and it's multicolored. So it has all, I think they, they color it with different veggies, but it's very light. And what I did is it's still a little warm, which is nice because it's going to absorb the dressing that we're going to make. But make sure you put enough water and you season it with salt. And that's all you need. But um, it can, if you don't drain it right away and rinse it off, it's, it's got a lot of starch in it. So make sure you cook it for about 10 or 15 minutes and that's it. And then you rinse it with cold water and put it through a strainer and you're good to go. So another good make-ahead dish. But we're going to put all different veggies in with it. But let's start with the dressing first. We're going to start with that. And I have in here about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And then we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice. And again, this is all to taste. You know me and my measurements, but I'll be sure to include the measurements with you. About a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. A good sized clove of garlic. Because this is a dressing, after all. We want a lot of flavor in our dressing. Because this is like a pasta. So you want to have a, be sure you season it this well. So a little bit, mix that up. And then, because um, we have some in my garden, I'm going to take some fresh herbs. I think I'll do that at the end. I want to add a little bit of honey, because we're going to add vinegar to this, too. So just a little drizzle of honey, not even a teaspoon, just to take the acidic flavor out. A little bit of cumin, because we're not going towards the Italian on this, except for some fresh basil. So we're going to put a little bit of that. And then I had all these wonderful flavored vinegars. And I thought since we had lemon in there, this is a Sicilian lemon white balsamic vinegar. And I get these at the specialty shops. They're like wine tasting. And you can go in and get all different flavors of all olive oils and vinegars. 
So I thought that would be a nice little addition to give it a little more lemony flavor. Just about a tablespoon. And if you didn't have this, you can certainly use like an apple cider vinegar, but I like to mimic the fruitiness of this. And that's going to be a little salt because we have a lot of veggies in here. And this is your one opportunity to season everything. So two of these equals a teaspoon, so about a teaspoon of salt, because that's a lot of pasta. Even though I salted the water, we have all these veggies going in. And then I'm going to drizzle in some olive oil, and I'll probably do three tablespoons of olive oil. And then we're going to taste it. And if it needs a little more acid, you can add lemon juice some more vinegar so let's let's give this a taste and see how it works you can see it's like a regular vinaigrette and you can use you can make your own vinaigrette or use a bottle to one if you want to go Italian you can certainly do that that's good I think I like a little more lemon juice though make it more summery That'll be good. And a little more, I think a little more vinegar. I like my dressings acidic. A little more vinegar. And that's good. And I'm going to drizzle this in because the couscous is still a little bit warm. So it's going to soak in. Let me move this over here so you can see all the colors that we're going to add to this. And you can serve this room temperature, or you can chill it overnight. It gets even better as it sets. So certainly do that. And sometimes I've added lemon zest to this as well. So you can add, I'm not adding cheese to this, but you could add like a feta cheese or black olives. But this is what we're going to do today. We're going to take a clean spoon, and I have our onions that we've sliced up fairly thin in a little, like a dice, and soaked them in a little sugar and water. And I'm not going to put too many of those because I'm going to get our green onions over here for color. I want something green and lively in there. So I'm going to put a little bit, about half green onions and half red onions or chives. And then I have, now you could do red peppers, yellow peppers, or whatever, but I, I love to use these red pepper dews, the mild ones, and the pepperoncini that are both peppers, and they come in a jar. So you don't have to run to the store to get any. You have them right in a jar, and they're always on hand. And I even use these. I love them so much. I put them in Mexican food. They're really good. So this, look at the colors already. Can you see that? This is going to be really good. Some sliced tomatoes. Just regular, I think these were Campari. And those. I cooked up, these are chickpeas. And I cooked them in a little bit of za'atar. The seasoning za'atar, which is a Middle East. You can see all the textures that are going to be in there. Yeah, we can put them all in. And chickpeas are very good for you, and they add a nice little crunch. And I made extra, and I did some hummus with some tahini, and put them in there and made some nice tahini. So clear the decks here. And then I'm going to take a Persian cucumber, or an English cucumber, I'm gonna, I love these because you don't have to de-seed them. Take all the seeds out. They're not very watery where you would with a regular cucumber, but you could use a regular cucumber if you'd like. But just make sure and take the seeds out. Otherwise, it's going to be too watery. And this adds a nice freshness to your salad. 
and cut them in nice big chunks. And I think I'm going to add a few more. I really think a few more. And this is just a great combination. Especially if you have a garden. Imagine all the different things you could put in there. Like you would a regular salad, except for the lettuce. But you could put in shredded cabbage or carrots. But I like it just like this. And let this set. I'm going to put this aside. And then, you know what? I wanted to add a little bit of fresh basil. Because this, I don't know, it just goes really well with the tomatoes in there. And then a little bit of fresh parsley. This is from my garden. And oh, this, this is like summer. Smells just like summer. And it has just a nice herbiness, freshness that's going to bring all these flavors together. And who doesn't love fresh basil in the summertime? Put that in and look at the colors. This is going to make a great presentation. So I'm going to Set this aside, and I'll get everything together, and we're going to skewer our swordfish, turn on the broiler, and get busy with our main course. So we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. I've started on our skewers here. Look at how pretty these are. And we're actually going to get four out of these. I, I never know. Um, so that's good. I mean, these are great for leftovers, or you, it's so good you probably want to do two. And I wanted to mention as well that I have, I sprayed nonstick on here. I have the broiler heating up. And I put a little water in the bottom so that when these drip down, if they should, it won't smoke, hopefully. So I'm going to do the last one here. And these are going to be so good. And we got lots of onions. And look at our beautiful chunks, how they're marinated, and they're very soft. And then our lemon slice. I try to put just one lemon slice, but you could put more if you'd like. And those go on. Another cherry tomato. Onion. I love onions. I always tend to put more onions than anything because I think they're so good. And I think we can get all of these on here. Enjoy another one. Somebody's going to get a lot on this one because I got extra. And one more. And that was only about half a pound of swordfish, so we got quite a bit out of that. I'm going to put those on there. You can even put a few of the onions over here because they're so good. And then I'm going to broil these under the broiler on the very top shelf for about three to four minutes per side. They're not going to take very long, so you want to keep an eye on them. And I love the metal skewers. Remember I said that these, because they're so close to the broiler, they're not going to catch on fire, which is good. Even if you soak them, you just never know. And they're flat. Um, we did a segment once when we did skewers. These are flat skewers, so when you turn them, the food doesn't tend to roll around. A flat skewer is always better. It gives you more surface for them to hang on to, and they're less apt to spin. So I'm going to get these in the broiler, and when we come back, we're going to gather everything together for the final presentation. You're going to love it. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. Check out our swordfish skewers and our very colorful couscous salad. Look at how all the colors of the different vegetables and get your prettiest platters and 
this couscous I made extra because it's so delicious the next day as well. That's a whole meal. And we're going to do our lemonade, strawberry lemonade. We have right here, and I've chilled the glasses. And a special treat are these, if I can quit change, chasing them around. These are ice cubes, round ice cubes that I put with strawberry mint, a little wedge of lemon, and a strawberry slice. So we'll put those into our strawberry glasses. This is a beautiful strawberry lemonade. Look, it even has a head on it. That's pretty cool. That's legit. We'll pour some over the top. This to me is summer in a glass. And pour a little there because we're going to turn this into a spritzer with a little bit of sparkling water. It's a strawberry sparkling water. And all of this you can do ahead of time except for the fish. But you can certainly do the marinade. And then we have strawberry mint from my garden. And we're going to put that right on the top. And let me tell you, this is why I love summer. Look at that. That is a feast. Take advantage of these wonderful vegetable season, our fabulous local fish that's always fresh. Try swordfish. It's meaty. It's delicate. It's hearty. It takes on wonderful flavors of the marinades. You're going to love that. Simple, easy to do. And customize it to what you and your family would love. It's, it's a winner. And this beautiful, beautiful strawberry lemonade. So here's to you. Thank you to everybody who writes in. Try these recipes. And may the fork be with you. Mm -hmm.